Is that because you just like hearing me say it? I do like hearing you say it. It makes it, it makes it better. I do it. I do need a little bit of artist tape. Maybe not. Maybe the, the painter's tape ought to do it. Okay, I have to get paper. I have one sheet of paper. That's it? That's it. What are you going to do? I'm going into my studio. I'm getting more. You have a studio? That's cool. I know. One day you're going to come over here and see it. Oh, I would love that. You know, I turn my back for one minute and yeah. get the stuff out, out of the plant. Tucker, he's a really a wild man. Good boy. All right, I gotta let everybody in, Stace. Okay. Here we go. I'm tying up the beast. You put him in the. You put him in the room. I mean, you put him in his crate. No, 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 no. I have a a new system. Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome, hello. welcome. Good morning. Gonna make sure everybody's coming in on time. So much work to do today. I mean, if you can call it work, it's not really work. I guess it's kind of work. Um. All right. Hey. So, Hey, Stace, you made it. Hello, everyone. Thumbs up. I see smiles. Down. Smiles and thumbs up. Hey. Oh, now I can see everyone. I see a chat. Hi, Madeline. Hi, Simone. Oh, yeah. So I love it when you guys work. wave to me or thumbs up or just acknowledge me. Hi, Ellie. Who else? Naomi. I don't know who Fisher is. Amelia. Um, no, that's the wrong ooh. thing. Um, Janelia oh. and Fisher. Who are you, Fisher? Hmm. Sorry, y'all. I just got. I got. I don't know if I had to get my text message to not show up. Will do. Will do. Okay. Um. All right. So let's get this thing. Uh. Let's get this party started. Um, we've got a couple things. I've got the shell planned for today. We'll see if we get to it. Um, this artist is named, um, oh, wait, hold on. Let me make sure everybody's in here. There's no latecomers. Oh, that's the wrong button. That's the wrong button. Participants. Let's move the chat. Participants. Okay. Yeah, everybody's in. All right, cool. Great. Um, this is an illustrator um, named Robert Lawson. I don't think we've ever done anything from him. Um, he illustrated a bunch of um, books, um, Ben and Me, which was about like Ben Franklin's like pet mouse. Um, he did, he just did, he did a lot of really interesting things. Anyway, this, this book that I have isn't a collection of the stories, but it's a collection of his writings. And this is a bagpipe character. Um, and there's a couple things I wanted to say about it. We're not going to draw the whole face. Um, we're going to warm up with it, but we're going to warm up with this feather and I'm going to zoom in. Um, <clears throat> I just love that. Like we did, I think yes, last week was the feather. So it'll be interesting to see a, um, you know, kind of like a more stylized approach and a more minimal approach to the, um, uh, you know, the feather. Um, and then we're just going to kind of march down. I want to go over the ear as a, as like a piece of anatomy. Um, I kind of want to go over this brooch and then maybe even this, like the, I, I, this, this weekend I did a chalkboard drawing for a, um, you know, for a restaurant. Um, at least I planned it and it had like a rock and roll theme with like an electric guitar and then symbols. And then down here, this like reminded me of a symbol. 
um, you know, from like a drum set. Anyway, it's like, it's all lined up in like this really nice vertical. Um, and then again, I said, you know, we've got lots of other things planned, but this is, this is um, pen and ink. So if you have ink pens, um, maybe grab those um, because it's like really nice to like look at his inking style. Um, I don't know. I, I, I love this guy. Um, and the, the intentions are for publication. So the way that he does the drawings are really bold mark making, really high contrast so that it can run through a printing press and um, it doesn't kind of need colors <clears throat> and it holds up, um, you know, at a distance. I guess that's not, that's, I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, let me zoom in. Um, and if you guys have any questions, obviously like unmute yourself and just talk. I can only see like three people at a time. Um, so um, just that's how it is. So um, if you just wanna, if you need to talk, talk. If you have any questions, ask. And um, this will be really neat. Um, the ear is gonna be a little bit involved and I have a notes myself about the ear. Um, it's really, it's not perfect but it's very useful. So we'll go over all the parts of the ear, which is something that like evades even some of the most talented artists in, in like history. Um, there's, you know, the ear is definitely an, a, a moment of um, struggle. Um, and we're just gonna like basically solve that, get it out of the way. And I'm gonna kind of explain why um, the ear is a little bit challenging, even though it should not be as hard as it is, it just has to do with our orientation and like where the, the position that we see the ear most often is not actually in a profile view in this side view. Um, okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna have a couple different drawings going. So just to, to fit on the screen and then with, it was a nice introduction. I'm, I'm feeling good today. Let's move this over. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the other thing I wanna point out. I'll just talk about the, um, there's this lesson that I do called the sphere and it's this the sphere lesson will I'll actually do it in one of these classes um but um artists like through history everyone's had to draw the sphere like a ball like a globe that's like lit from one side and it has a shadow side and then you find kind of creative ways to use it like in your practice and this guy does this black bagpiper's cheek with this like epic sphere you know, so it's like, it's almost, it, it's it, it's not even natural, but there's, do you see this like 3D ball in there? And the ball has all of the characteristic traits of a value sphere, meaning there's a highlight, there's a, um, a shadow side, which is like, they call it the core of the shadow. The darkest part of the shadow is along here. It even has like reflected light coming from this side. Um, so it's got highlight, it's got light side, it's got shadow side, it's got reflected light. Um, and it does have like this crazy cross hatching because again, like he doesn't get to use tone. He does pencil drawings, um, but you know, this is for, th these are his <laughs> So to be able to like cross hatch your way into like a somewhat of a smooth skin, but also have all that mass. I don't think it's particularly that successful. Like I think is, I think it looks weird. Like I've seen this drawing a bunch of times and I've never approached it because the face looks so bizarre. Um, and, you know, his eyes are like kind of bugging out and he's got this like wild expression. And this cross hatching is not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily read all that well. Anyway, I did want to, before we zoomed in, I did want to point that out because we will be returning to that, the concept of the uh, value sphere and being lit from 45 degrees to the side, 45 degrees to the front. It's kind of like classic Rembrandt lighting. Um, that's not the topic for today, but it is actually a really good example of somebody taking a classic art school lesson and then like applying it into their, you know, mature work. All right, let me move up here. That was a little off, uh, was a little off topic, it's okay. And if you don't want to speak up, I will try to remember to look at the chat. Yes, thank you, Stacy. Of course. Oh my gosh, yes, I can't wait. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out a little bit, move it down. All right, so this is what we've got. We have a, um, what I think is like a metal brooch um, that is attached to this beanie. Um, it's like a, it's like a beret, actually. 
Um, and the brooch attaches the feather. Does the feather have, um, you know, any different colors? Who knows? We could probably color it later. Um, but um, I think what I'm going to start with um, is this long, gentle S curve. And I think that last week, I don't know how S curvy the feather was. Um, oh, snap. Hold on. I got to let, uh, I gotta let Dar in. Uh, Trevor, you keep going in and out of focus and it seems to be shaking a little bit. Okay. Yes. I'm balanced. We might. Yeah. I, I hope that it doesn't, I hope it doesn't stay like this, um, but there's not much I can do. I, I'm zoomed in kind of far, so it might be a little bit confused. Maybe if I zoom out, it'll be all right. Um, all right, so we don't get to see the very base of the um, feather, uh, where the, you know, kind of where those, Stacy, do you remember the terminology from last week? Uh, I... <laughs> I can't remember either. It's fluffy. No, I do not. I can... <laughs> no, no, I can look it up though. Um, okay, so cool, we're, we're, we're fine. Um, so we'll get the, the little circular uh, brooch, which is pinning the feather to the hat. And then I'm gonna come up and add the thickness of the quill. See how it, it S curves off to the top. Kind of makes like a little bit of a Y shape at that very top. <clears throat> and then the light, um, if you think about the sphere, the light is coming from the right side. Um, you know, you can do an arrow, you can draw a light or, you know, a sign, uh, a sun. The inside of this furrow gets a hard shadow, which is really nice. And then the right side is only suggested by these blades coming off the center. So you don't actually need a line on the right side. You desperately need a line on the left. And that line represents the, the shadow. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, so where do the, where does like the ends of the, where's the silhouetted edge of the, the feather? It's hard to say um, because it's all jagged. And I'm just gonna do left side, right side. And just try to attempt to get the thickness of this. And the mark making is interesting. I'm, I'm seeing straight lines, you know, just like regular, like lines that go up generally on the bottom. I'm seeing little teeny triangles on the tips. I'm seeing S curving, you know, there are straight lines, but I'm, I'm picking up like an S curve right here. It's nice. Um, I suspect there's going to be a theme and variation. So there are, there is this section up here where there seems to be a silhouetted edge where all of the, you know, tips line up and the pen, you know, is connecting. And of course I'm sketching in pencil, but um, I can come back in with pen on top of this. That's why I'm kind of moving a little bit quickly um, because whatever I don't um, accomplish in the pencil, I will hopefully resolve in the pen. And I did this because I wanted to follow up on the feather, but also not take all day. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting, okay. Yeah, both sides of the feather seem to be dark. I was thinking that in, in my mind, this left side of the feather, you know, that left silhouetted edge, that would be darker, but they look kind of the same. They look mm -hmm. kind of... Um, if you look at the hat, um, which I didn't even like sketch in at all, but that hat has a cast shadow on it. So the feather does have at least enough thickness um, to throw a shadow onto the hat. 
<clears throat> when you sketch with pen and ink, um, you really do want to kind of get as much as you can done in pencil. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, it's like a first run. It's almost like a first draft. Um, and then, you know, you switch modes because with pencil, I mean, if you get it wrong, you can erase it and you can, you know, you can it's a mental, it's like a mental, it's like a mental state. It's like a state of mind where you think, okay, yeah, I, I can backtrack if I need. Um, when you start with the ink, it's not easy to backtrack. <clears throat> See, I'm gonna try this one. Where's my other pens? Did somebody not put the pen back? Maybe Trevor. I'm usually I've been pretty good with this packet. All right. So my my thinking here is very committal. Um, oh, no, you're I, up now. Oh my god, you're I'm, I'm going quick. Yeah, but, hello. But we but we we sketched the feather last week. There's like we don't have to do a lot of decoding. Like we don't have to translate um, ideas about the feather into drawing because we're not looking at a real feather. We're just kind of analyzing another man's interpretation of a feather. So we're using his techniques, and sometimes it is even harder. I guess you know taking other people's ideas and then trying to employ them in your own drawing. Um, the main the really the most I think the most important concept in terms of creating the dimension is going to be you know tightening up the silhouetted edge you know where there's there are little gaps but then there's little clusters that um, group together and then making that solid that cast shadow of the thickness of the quill you know that 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 middle that center portion. Mm -hmm. Ooh. yeah i've been i've been sketching quick with my pen the pen tips uh the nubs come in all these different sizes and um this one i've been drawing quickly if i lay my pen tip on like on the paper kind of heavy and slow mm -hmm. lines become really dark so i think i'm going to save that you can actually see how much darker that triangle was. I'm just gonna do the tip up here. I can just assume that it's, maybe I'll just make it darker. So I'm gonna make all these lines, and just give the, the paper more time to absorb the ink and it will become, it will, that whole top section is now very dark. So I kind of sacrificed the tip of my feather here to show that the, it's a, the paper functions like a sponge. And you know, if you if you just if you go if you go lightly, the pen, the uh, the paper doesn't absorb as much pen, and you can get a finer line. There is like a wispiness that I may not be achieving, which I think I just started on the second half. So I went from the bottom to the top, um, which you know you'll find that when you orient your hand, like when you're right-handed or whatever, and you go from the your marks are make different triangles if you're going up like a sawtooth like you could sawtooth it up or you can sawtooth it down and those marks are different so different yeah so maybe experiment like my left side here like going top to bottom my feather looks my marks look so much better they just they just look nicer going from outside in and on the right side I did inside out. So those little things you can add, you can just, you know, it's part of the, um, you know, it's part of the fun of learning how to draw is trying things in different ways. And the nuances is, is, the nuance of it is so personal that like no one can ever fully teach, you know, it's just too much content. So you have to take a little bit of ownership over, you know, the, your, the look of your drawing um, and you know your exploration as a as a draftsman. So this is for the first time. I mean, it's a kind of a light feather up against the. It's a dark feather, excuse me, up against a light background. 
So these silhouetted edges, even though it's a kind of a light feather, it needed to have a dark outline. It flips when you start looking at the, the hat. So we have this brooch. The brooch is really in basically in three parts. There's an outside rim, which is almost like the frame. And then there's like an inside gem. And that gemstone is probably garnet, um, is you know held onto the brooch with a tiny frame. And then there's like the, the, the symbol portion, not like symbolic, but like an actual metal like symbol part which is in between the inner frame of the garnet and then the outer frame of like that final brooch. So um, I guess I should probably sketch that in pencil first. So, oh, that was, the, that was the point I was trying to make. Let me just resolve a couple ideas about the feather. We do have this black beret, it could be a green beret, it could be purple beret. It's just a deep, it's a darker value. And I'm more interested in like the nature of this shadow that because the light is coming from the right is throwing the shadow onto the beret and the beret creates this um darker object for the feather to be light against <coughs> excuse me and i and i actually even like my i like my dark tip of my feather even more now because um, it makes it a really a dark against light at the top kind of pushes that idea and then the feather up against the hat it is a light feather up against the dark of the hat. Excuse me Trevor. Yeah. Did you say that we would um, also be doing the shell today? <laughs> yes that's what I, was, I, I, I did say that. Are you thinking that we would be spending most of the? Never mind. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I the I do. I would like to have um, an anatomy component every week. I think that's a nice. I think it was like a nice idea because to get through eyes, nose, mouth, ears, you know, to do all of that, you know, is I think it'd be nice to space out all those components. Um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe I, I admit that maybe my the warm up here could be yeah um, no mine was just really specifying got it got it got it would you be surprised though we there, there's a lot of time in this class i have a question yeah um so are we drawing like the entire guy's face or are we just drawing each feature like yeah so the good question thank you we're gonna draw we're gonna draw this feather because it was like the follow-up and then we're gonna draw the ear and that's it we're not going to draw the. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about maybe drawing that that the other brooch that uh, holds his um, cape together or holds the bagpipe, um, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. But if you could, um, you might want to go ahead and take when Trevor zooms back out um, a picture of the whole image so that. You know, if you want to do that on your own, to go ahead and do that. Yeah, and I will. I'll make that available for sure. Um, so, the pencil line. <clears throat> when I'm drawing the frame, you know, I drew, started with my my the outer circle, and then I, the next move was the you know the inner, not the inner part, but like the frame that's like slightly smaller than the outer. <clears throat> that is going to be an unbroken line in pencil. So if you see how I just drew it 360, I didn't, you know, there's like line variation, but there's no breaking. Um, there is, in order to create the, um, the feeling of a shiny metal, um, he's got these mar this really unique set of mark making and um, the line, and he uses a lot of broken lines. You know? So there is a dark silhouette around the whole outside, but the frame does have darker shade parts and then lighter moments. So I'm just anticipating that as I sketch my pencil lines, I can be a little bit more, um, not, I don't wanna say not careful, but I, I'm like trying to place where everything is. I'm not trying to do the final look. There's this really incredible teardrop shape that's reflecting off the glass or the gemstone um, in the middle. It's really kind of nice. 
Um, the, the disc, this metal disc does have kind of like a sun feel. It feels like these, um, these little shiny, these little shiny parts are kind of radiating out, you know, from the center. You know, um, so much so that there's a, like this, it looks like there's these dark triangles of radiating lines. And then there's even light, uh, you know, and the, and the only way you can get light is by, you know, keeping the paper from getting any ink. So I'm applying dark marks and then I'm conserving the light marks. And actually, it really does, it, it already, even with the pencil, it has kind of a metallic reflection and you know, like I said, I can I can manipulate the graphite, you know, you know, really well. And so I was kind of like almost clumsily committed to <clears throat> um, my circle, and now I can go back and anticipate all these little light and dark reflections, both um, on the inside of the disc and then also on the outside frame. I hadn't even noticed the these little re you know reflection lines. Um, on the outside of the frame. And this is where you kind of get into this, you know, point of discovery. You know, there's, you, you can be like, oh, this isn't hard. And you're like, oh, wow. There's stuff that I did not know about. Um, and as the um, feather does, um, uh, you know, like emerge out from underneath our brooch disc, um, it's kind of a cone and then it comes to this beautiful little rounded point um, that has a little bit of a shadow on it. And then that has also a cast shadow. So the, the tip of the quill throws a shadow on his, um, what you call light hair. So compared to the beret, the hair is very light. We don't know what color it is. Um, we just know that it's a lot lighter than the um, beret. So if anyone uh, found that doing the outer circle in ink was challenging, meaning that the weight of their ink line really varied and it doesn't look like an exact circle because mine looks pretty, you know, I'll take um, Trevor's word. Mine looks really wonky. So I'm going back and making the whole line thicker so I can feel just a little bit more comfortable about it appearing like a circle. <clears throat> yeah, that's interesting too. Um, so I don't know if Stacey, this is what you're saying, but like your outer line was a little bit wonky. And so you can kind of clean it up if you had to, because, um, yes. because the outline, it's up against the dark object. It is a light disc up against the dark of a beret. So you could kind of, I guess if there's any part where you did have some flexibility, it would be um on the outside rim good call well i was actually thinking the opposite if you weren't doing the beret and so your background is white to simply thicken the line of the circle oh oh oh, oh right so that dark line becomes a you know almost like a an edge or a thickness to the metal. Right. Yeah. Okay, here's my first, what I would kind of, I'm kind of like saying is like this, this broken line, you know, they get the, the rim and on the right, and then the rim on the left and where they meet in the middle, they don't connect. And that happens again around six o'clock maybe 5.30 right here at the bottom. <clears throat> There's a, you want to almost think about it like a, yeah, like a frame. There is a light rim that is a, holds the reflective stone inside the middle. Hopefully you drew, you all drew bigger than I did.
So my uh, gemstone is big, you know, compared to the hole. And so my, the symbol or the disc in between is smaller. And I'm okay with that. That just means I have less shiny lines. I mean, it doesn't, it's not supposed to seem like it's spinning, but I feel like some of those, some of those marks yeah. make it feel like it could be a spinning top of some kind. And if, it, if it's not spinning, there's still, you know, light bouncing off of it. I'm really trying to keep my wispiness. Keep those lines thin because I just don't have very much room. <clears throat> well, I'm really happy with my feather. Not so happy with my disc. Uh, I, no. think I, I think I fell into the, I think I fell into the, I should have switched to a, um, a smaller tip. Oh, watch this. See how I can add these little teeny wisps. Yeah, that would have done it. Barely. They're so fine. Oh, and then full disclosure, one of my students gave me um oh let me see this is oh one. That's a one. This is oh five. I have this new set of uh, pencils. Yeah, pencils. those are great. I and like they you can see it, like they give you what the size and the look of each one of the tips are, and they go. Some of them go so small. Um, I'm I don't do a lot of pen and ink, um, but I think having this isn't there a thing called Inktober? Have you guys ever heard of that? No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a thing. It is. It is a very big thing, and I'm doing it. Yeah, um, I've I've had students do it the last couple of years. I don't know how long it's gone on. I've never personally done it, um, but this p this is like very this has like very Inkto Inktober vibes. Well, what does the word mean? It's um, it's basically doing a drawing every day of October, and sort of like a spooky aesthetic i guess mm -hmm. really i didn't know that wow well. that sounds cool <clears throat> so stays i know that they have like there's like different prompts like you can you can yeah I, I don't know if you make up your own or there's probably like you know inktober like places you can that they give you ideas oh yeah all right that this sounds is, really cool i know it is actually really cool um and it just keep, it just keeps you it keeps you making art. I'm trying to find the texture for the beret, and I we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna basically end this drawing in maybe like five minutes or so. So if um if you guys are you know if you're not done, we're gonna be ending soon. Um, and so in those five minutes, I wasn't planning on doing the beret or anything, but I do like the. Like kind of this, I got to, I want to figure out whether he did cross hatching. And if he did do cross hatching, what were those angles? I think they're more curvy. I wonder what kind of bird this feather was. <clears throat> um, I should show you this other scene. He's in the Highlands. Wherever the Highlands are. See, that's the thing. This book is a whole bunch of his illustrations. It doesn't tell you about the story. So I'm assuming it's Ireland. But okay, yeah, yeah. I won't stop it. I won't stop it. We, is it 11.03? We'll stop at 11.05. And I'll show you this other illustration. It's just like dramatic landscape where he's, this character is like really, really small. Like the face is like zoomed in in this drawing and he's super, super small in this grand landscape. There's like rain and 
layered mountains going back into the distance. It's it's kind of an impressive. It's kind of we we won't sketch it, but it'll be neat to see it. And then we'll do a quick little show because I would like to see whether um, people have a good time or not. This is where I'm punching my darks. I'm looking for where, where in my drawing are those darkest moments occurring and kind of emphasizing them a little bit more. So I don't want to miss them. And you have to kind of, it's like one of the things that I think about you know, when I'm like, all right, I'm almost done with this thing. So I like look for my extreme lights and the extreme darks. And then, um, and then I look for transitions, you know, where are those, are they smooth transitions? Are they abrupt transitions? Like if you look at the hat right here, this is a very smooth transition from like the deepest dark of the hat moving into the light mass and then moving over back into the light. Like that, that would be a, and I did not <laughs> achieve I achieved a very textured, very uh, loud um, beret, but that wasn't my intention. I probably should have been clearer about that. But my disc is good. I'm noticing there's this little shadow up against the edge too. <clears throat> there's a little light, uh, dark halo around the metal disc. And I also, Part of it, part of knowing your your materials, um, I should come back in and erase my pencil lines because sometimes unintentionally your pencil does some work for you. You know, there's a line in there that you know the pencil is holding holding that line, and in the end, everything needs to be translated into ink. So this is my this is part of like kind of resolving. Even though it's a sketch, even though it's a warm up, um, I want it to be complete. And if your ink is still wet, when you come back in with the eraser, it'll smudge. So, word of warning on that. And sometimes you need to come back in and uh, add more pen. I don't look like I need much work in here. But... and i can't see this this little tip right here that is probably too long but i if it was if the hat the only way i could make that shorter is if i if i pulled the hat up higher should i do that yeah i'll do that just so i can show you how i can i, I can't erase the line but i could crop it off by um blending that into the dark of the hat yeah, that's a pretty bold move, but again, it's just a little, it's a little study. So here I can really crop things off. Just, so now I almost like overdid it. That's cool. <clears throat> All right, let's take a little break. Let's see what everybody's doing. 11 of seven <clears throat> here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, Amelia, I've got you up on the thing first, and then Stacey, you're next. Do you mind if I pin you first? Great. <clears throat> Go right ahead. Whoa. Yes. Nice color around that. Yeah, that is a, nice, a gorgeous frame. <clears throat> yeah, maybe the tips, if you wanted to, the tips of the outside of the feather could maybe like it's not quite a silhouette line like you don't want to draw like all the way around the outside of the feather but you could darken some of the the, the feather tips and you know strengthen the silhouette slightly um okay stacy you're next actually believe it or not good work yeah that's odd and then i got Janina, <laughs> simone and ellie after Ooh, that's nice. That's nice taste. I love that paper you use. 
Thank you. And that, that disc really pops. This is the last piece well, of, there's well, a lot of move, There's a lot of movement in there. <clears throat> um, all right, Janiya, let's see it. Please. See that? Oh man, yes, I can. It's stunning. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Cool. And yeah, you went, I, I like it. You went really heavy. So the, um, the pendulum swings. I mean, some people like <clears throat> a lot of light lines. Other people take the ink a lot further. Um, and I like that contrast. <clears throat> um, Simone. Oh, that's lovely. Can you yeah, hold? Nice, nice rectangle and... too. Great. Great, great. Oh, okay. Cool. That was good. I like you. I like your interpretation. Um, Ellie, did we get to see yours? Yeah. Where are you, Ellie? Dang, that's cool. You got so uh, much to mention. Oh, there hey. you are. Hold on, Ellie. And it does look like it, it does look like it's like spinning. That one Thank really you. feels like it's spinning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, Madeline, can we see yours? Yes. Okay. So you, oh, I like that dark, you, do dark. Have a wide, you have a wide range of ink, which is really good. Um, you, you have different pens and stuff. And down a tiny bit. Yep. Yep. And freeze. Oops. That's a perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Sebastian, how about you, boss? Thank you. I got it. Yeah, great. This is a good warm up. I mean, look at that drawing. It's so tight. It's so good. I mean, it's like for this time frame. Okay, cool. I'm glad. Thanks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, Dara. We're ready. It's you, Dara. And then, oh my gosh, so oh my gosh. delicate. Oh, wow. It's nice and soft. It is so soft. And you're using yeah. pencil, right? Great, great use of the pencil. Um, I will show a couple other pencil sketches. This guy does pencil really well in addition to the pen. Um, all right, how about the brothers? Let's see it. Replace pen. Rowan, you guys there? Yeah, we're there. Nope. Deegan. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, Tegwin, my bad. It's fine. Hey, there's no picture on there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That thing is moving. Yeah, it's twirling. <laughs> I mean, it looks it looks like a it looks like a frisbee disc. That thing is moving so fast. Great work, and the pen and the 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 the, the, the points of the feather um, are very compelling too. Love it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Rowan, how are you? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Hold that a little bit back from your screen. And oh, did you make it a garnet too? Look at that red note in there. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then these, the, the, the curling, like the kind of like the curling of the, the yellow highlights is really strong too. And it looks great on that page. It like really holds that page nicely. Oh, yeah. Rock and roll. All right, Naomi, can we see yours too? Man. nice hold that really still great 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 man yeah that that con that, that design is the i love the the trapezoidal like base um both top and bottom light and dark you know really as a handsome background for that uh for that piece cool these are great, y'all. All right, let's do this ear. I don't want to say get Even it over with. Trevor, did but, we get yeah. Janaya or did I? Did we get Janaya? Yeah. Janaya, can I you ask do, you? Will you show it again so we can get your so Stacy can get your picture? Let me pin you though. Oh yes, yes, yes. I got it. I definitely got it. Thank okay. you. Screen share. Um, you guys can use any materials, honestly probably the pencil might be better. Um, and that's the other thing you, you take, if you start with pencil, you can always take it into pen or you can just let it 
stay, right? With right in pencil, right in pencil land. Graphiteville. <laughs> okay, so there's going to be some anatomical terms, but I promise not a lot. <clears throat> Enough, enough to make it useful. All right, let me zoom back out so you guys can see where it sits on his face. <clears throat> um, and it's not even helpful. So part of the part of the thing that makes um, you know ears difficult is like it, it, it's a really it, they're sometimes hard to place um, you know on the head. And the way that I like to do it, um, and in profiles it's a little bit different, but there's a cheekbone in here that's all swollen. And then there's a zygomatic arch that rolls down that like S curves and it leads right up to like the intersection of this helix, which is the, is like the dome part. And then the anti-helix, excuse me, the tragus, sorry. The tragus is like the little, um, I call it the, um, it's like a bumper. Um, some people actually press the, if you were to like, if, a, if there's an ambulance that goes by and it's really loud, some people put their fingers in their ear other people press that little cartilage bone and close the ear canal. That, that cartilage bone right here, that is the tragus. So there's this intersection between the helix, which is this round part, and the tragus. And that's where the zygomatic arch kind of brings you um, most often. Um, one of the things that he doesn't really show because the sideburns don't come down low, but you can feel it on yourself. Um, yeah, so there's hair that go, there's temple hair and then it turns into sideburns. Um, sideburns in men turn into facial hair, but sideburns in women just like end. But everyone has sideburns. And there's a, you know, so I can't really do this here. Hold on, let me cut it. Imagine this guy had blonde hair and then he had long, had long sideburns. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so I'm giving this guy sideburns here. Um, and there is a, there's like a gap in between the hair and then where that tragus begins. Um, so whether you have sideburns or facial hair or whatever, you, I have a whole finger's length of you know, cheek that after the sideburns end and before this tragus part begins. Um, so you have to get kind of like, it's a really far distance from the corner of the eye to kind of where the ear begins. So it's actually really far back on the head. My nose is up here. My ear starts all the way back here. It's so far, <clears throat> which is part of the thing that makes like eyes, nose, mouth, chin, all of those features are all in the front plane. The ear is all the way on the side plane, like the side plane of the head and it's really far back. So I'm just like pointing out things that where people will go wrong before they even start drawing the ear is like they put it in the wrong place. Um, so anyway, I'm not saying that he's got a great placement in the ear, but he does have like appropriate anatomy. Somewhat appropriate anatomy. Okay, let's, let's, let's get down to business here. Um, <clears throat> where we're gonna start, um, before I zoom in, you see how the ear is at this angle? You wanna, fi you wanna find this angle of the ear and the angle of the ear changes so much just by like when you tilt your head forward or tilt your head back or like left right i mean you can move your head in so many different positions <clears throat> but this angle and honestly there's a side of me that thinks i should actually tilt the camera so that it goes like you know up and down um but i think we should stick with we stick with this presentation because a lot of times the ear is angled and just the fact that it is on an angle um, will teach you to look for that when you're drawing um, an ear and profile. Um, are we adding this to the feather and the hat that we drew? See, that's the thing. If you want to, you can do that. I wasn't planning on making it part of the thing. Um, but if you have enough real estate on your paper, I mean, you could like, you know, imagine there's ink on the end of this feather and you could like see where it drips down and it, and it hits the helix. So one of the first shapes we're gonna draw, well, it's the second shape we're gonna draw is the helix. Um, so we're gonna find that, that connection between the tragus and the helix. Um, the ear, honestly, there's only like four parts, there's only really like five parts to the ear. Um, and it's just, nobody knows the names of it. And you, know, you just gotta take a little extra time to learn it. So 
I'm going to leave that up to you all if that's what you would like to try to add it if you have real estate on your paper. Um, but it's not, but it's not, it's not part of the, the, this lesson. I'm not trying to make it part of the dynamics of this lesson. Oh, I didn't even notice that. He's got, look at how he's got little uh, tufts of hair that come in front of the helix. That's, that's neat. Um, all right. So here we go, people. I'm excited. Um, I'm going to start with the angle and I'm mean, hopefully the angle is close enough to the edge of the paper. So I get, I get it close to the edge, but I don't get it too close to the edge. <clears throat> All right. So there's the angle. And then sometimes, and I, this is like, this is a little bit tricky um, because you can, it can either be the, the saving grace or it can like destroy you. Um, but you, I like to put um, my ears in like ovals. I like to show the oval of the ear and just get a sense of how big it is. <clears throat> All of the, this big oval that I put in here is totally subject to modification. So don't make that line too big, but you know, by establishing this angle, we're seeing the angle of the ear, kind of the angle of the sideburns too. So the hair and the ear, you know, kind of conform to that same direction. And then I'm drawing this arc up here. I'm kind of anticipating the helix, which is this curving um, awning. It's really an awning and it leads down into the bottom of the ear lobe. So the ear lobe is down there. Those are, the, those are just like two parts that I just mentioned. The helix, which is the awning, the curling part, very characteristic of the human ear. Um, and then you know, leading down into the ear lobe, which is the part that everybody knows about because that's what gets pierced. Um, cool. So right now we're kind of like set up really nicely. Um, we have the angle, sort of the axis of this ear, and then we also have the, um, you know, the general um, size of the shape of the ear. All right, great. So here I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna point out the different parts, and then we'll go about drawing them. So there is what's called the tragus, and it's this. Um, you know, you should feel it in your ear. Um, it's not the it's not the bowl shaped part. There is a bowl shaped part, um, but it's it's the part that you could press down and it could collapse your ear canal so that it doesn't let any sound in. It's probably the safest way to close your ears, to be honest with you. It's also, um, it also is like a bumper. So things, you know, so if something were to sh come in the side of your head, like a, you know, like a rock or an arrow or a projectile or something, just like, it, you know, it, it wouldn't, you wouldn't have something go directly into your ear. This would be like this safety. It's like a, it's like a, it's a, it's a bumper. And yeah, I right. see it as a um, trapezoid. Yes, Stace. So are you referring, um, as I'm looking at the source, to what is white or what is dark? Oh yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so this is how you want to think about it. So the light part is the tragus. And then behind this, oh, and this is so a little bit gnarly, um, but I'm going to sketch it anyway. So behind this tragus is the ear canal. And here is my Q-tip. Forgive me, people. Please forgive me. Um, so yes, if you want to get oriented, you know, the, 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 tra the tragus protects the ear canal and is the closest thing. And, and kind of like right beyond, if you had x-ray vision, you looked beyond the tragus, your, your ear canal would begin. Okay, so this is um, kind of the positive shape and then it loops down into what's called the um, anti-tragus. So the tragus starts here and then it bowl shapes down into the anti-tragus and it kind of makes like a, you know, kind of like a W shape. All these things are different in everybody, um, but they all have the same things. So this is what's wild. And this is how all faces go. No matter who you, what, no matter what your face looks like, you, everyone's got an eyelid, everyone's got an iris, everyone's got a tear duct, everyone's got a pupil, everyone's got an eyelid. You know what I mean? Everybody has a tragus. Everybody has an earlobe. Some people's earlobes like hang really low. Some like connect right into the side of the face. There's infinite variation. So <clears throat> as we sketch this, know that this is, a very unique ear and every ear is really unique. Okay, so we've got the tragus, which blends and transitions immediately into the anti-tragus. <clears throat> then we're gonna do from the tragus, we're gonna start kind of like what I would say is the most characteristic component of the ear, which is the helix. 
And some people um, have um, triangular helixes. Some people have square helixes. Other people have um, perfectly round rainbow shaped helixes. Um, this guy seems to have a combination. So I'm going to start with my with a curve. So we get the rounded part. So it's the, the top and the bottom. I'm thinking about the outside. As it reaches the top up here, there's like a little hair that goes around. And then the artist, Raul, uh, Lawson rather, um, he switches from the curve and he moves kind of into a straight. You see that? How it's like curvy and then it straightens out. Um, some people, and I actually have it a little bit, there's this little bump that can happen in the corner of the ear here. And I guess that's like left over from when people had um, pointier ears. <clears throat> you know, it's, it, that's like the actual, if like, if you think about a dog's ear, you know, there's a dog's ear, dog's ear. This little tip right here that can flop over. Oh, that's so cute. I'll just flop it over right now. So this flops over. You know, where the left side and the right side of that enormous tragus meets in this dog's eyes, or uh, ears rather, here's his eyes, here's his nose. Oh, sorry. I'll get that after class. Um, this bump here in the human ear is kind of where the left side of the tragus and the right side of the tragus met in a, like a long time ago. So, that's where, then that's an interesting component. Okay, so the tragus is a, when I say an awning, it's, it kind of curls over and then it angles so that when rain comes down, it doesn't get in the ear. An awning is a, is like a, is like a, a, a part of the roof um, or, or tapestry that like comes out and, you know, keeps rain from falling on certain areas. So this whole thing, the curved part and these straight component parts, that whole thing is the helix. And that helix, you know, smoothly transitions into the earlobe. And then we'll just come down and we'll see how that earlobe, um, you know, attaches into the side of the head. It kind of like, you know, it curls down and it goes back up. And then this, this part below the, uh, below the anti-helix, you can kind of see it goes into the head there. Amazing. All right, so let me write this down here. You trade, uh, oh man, the spelling is not gonna be right. Okay, T-R-A-G-U-S. Maybe that's how you spell it, tragus, then anti-tragus. Okay, so then we have helix. So that's that would be one. Uh, anti-tragus would be two. Then we'll do helix, H-E-L-I-X. And then after that is anti-helix. A Oh, yeah, A-N-T-I-H-E-L-I-X. And then lobe, your lobe. Um, all right, so we've done four out of the five. So we have tragus, which is the first one, anti-tragus, which is this rounded bowl-shaped W. Then we have the helix, which is this curving part, which I said can be rounded, triangular, um, squarish, and then that turns into the ear lobe. <clears throat> now, the thing that you're gonna thank me for the rest of your life um, is, the, is in the part where that is the anti-helix. Um, and the anti-helix, makes the shape of a three-dimensional um, Y shape. Okay, so bear with me, please. Um, so this is the letter Y, capital letter Y. Then you have the lowercase letter Y. Great. Now you can make the capital letter Y 3D. You guys don't have to draw this, by the way, this is just for my explanation. <clears throat> then that's, th that's 3D. And actually, I can add three dimensions to that. Then you can have the lowercase y, which can be three dimensional as well. And that lowercase y is the shape that we're looking for in the anti helix. And I know it's like a stretch, but like, do you see how there's this part of the y? In our drawing, it looks like this. So this is one, um, the top the top left of the Y, top right of the Y, and then it curls down and it reattaches that Y, the base of the Y reattaches into the um, anti-tragus. <clears throat> so 
Now, I bring this up as well because, and I bring up the third dimension as well, is because what that form is, is it's really cylindrical. And the Y is a positive shape. You know, so I'm drawing these bracelet lines. If you were to connect the bracelet lines down into these gullies, it goes con uh, convex and then concave in between the Y. It's convex on the outside and then it's concave in the um, inner part of the anti-helix. Hopefully this is making sense. So it's con the Y is convex out and then the space between the Ys are concave. Convex, concave, and then convex, and then concave into the inner part of the um, helix. All right, so let's try to put this in here. So I'm gonna do the Y, the space between the Y, and then the outside of our 3D Y. And I'm going to erase the Q-tip. Q-tip caused more problems than I think it helped. All right, there it is. Um, amazing. So I put that Y. Now, if it was the Y, if it was the head on the other side, it would be a backwards Y. But I think that I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we should go about shading this bad boy. Um, we're going to talk about the light coming from up above and a little bit to the right. And uh, yeah, let's do this thing. Okay, so the your, the tragus is going to be light. Remember, Stacy mentioned that. And then the antitragus is also light. <clears throat> but then we get some darkness, um, you know, in the suggestion of that ear canal. And then we can show that the Y is 3D by showing the shadow side of the Y. And then it's going to throw a shadow on the inside. We have this like kind of bowl shape at the bottom that connects that, you know, joins everything. Um, it's, I don't know what you would, it, it's basically the, like the, if you had, if you put your hand up and create that bowl, the, um, you know, the ear shape with your hand to catch the sound waves, the palm would be this inner portion here. And it's the inside of the anti-helix and it leads um, you know, into the ear canal. All right, so the helix itself uh, throws a shadow because it's, a, it's, it's almost like an eyelid in a way. It's like a visor. You know, it's like if I put my hat, my bill, my hat to the front, it's gonna throw a shadow on my face. So the helix throws a shadow onto the top of our anti-helix. And, you know, it really, I mean, you think about when you have to clean your ears, um, you know, with soap and water or whatever, you, you gotta kinda gotta get up there. And so there's a space underneath this awning that catches sound waves, um, but it's also um, like kind of like a ridge or a gully that has shadow. You know, it's not receiving light, it's underneath the awning. So that's where this shadow is. And the, the shadow is beautiful in the sense that it, it does define the, the edge of the helix. So you know, we drew the line for the bottom of the helix. And now that line can get turned into a shadow. The line for the top of the helix, I wouldn't say problematic. It's just, I would say that line is probably gonna blend into you know, the hair.
and the ear, you know, sticks out of the hair. I think the hair kind of insulates it a little bit. Wow, cool. So that's, and that's the universal art. Um, I, I want to say, I don't want to call it, uh, it's like a kicker kind of, um, no matter what object you're drawing, it has to be in context. So like I'm sitting here trying to draw the ear. I can't get the ear to look right unless I draw, you know, the hair that's next to it. So it's like, well, then if I draw the hair, then when is the, you know, when does it end? You, you have to, but it is immediately, you know, the, if you draw the ear, you have to draw what the ear's up against. It's a mask, but it looks, it's really good. <clears throat> Um, this is the fun part. You know, we did this bowl shape of the inside of the anti-helix. That bowl shape is going to kind of continue with the concavity. So, you know, the the bowl is the space between the Ys. You know, and I'm going to use his, you know, hatch marking technique. to kind of suggest that concavity. <clears throat> the Y dips down. On the other side, I'm going to use the cavity again. So I'm almost overdoing the line work with my pencil so that my own mind, I can see what's happening. It looks great. Um, I love the, like this little, um, you know, the ear, his earlobe isn't very fleshy. Um, you, on my ear, the, um, on his ear, you can see the anti, uh, tragus really prominently. I mean, you can actually feel this cartilage. I mean, it feels stiff. Um, you know, my ear, my earlobe is so fleshy that you don't see any of that cartilage around there. You get the helix, of course you get the tragus cause they're not connected, but this, um, the anti tragus here, um, it's just, you don't really see it on a lot of people. <clears throat> and I'll just, before I do those details, um, the ear lobe itself, you can think about it um, more in terms of a, um, a cylinder, to be honest with you. So if you imagine you take a disc, a shallow disc, you know, this is a shallow cylinder and you get the shadow side here. This is the ear lobe as it enters into the um, helix on this side and then the, um, you know, enters into the head on that side. So the center of this disc is where you, you know, pierce your ear. And the, the disc is helpful because you can see that there is a broad side, like a middle of the earlobe, and then there's a side plane or a bottom plane to that earlobe. And the earlobe itself is really, it's kind of like a, it's, it's, a, it's a nice decorative thing, especially when it's pierced. Um, but then it, it, you know, it's being held up. It's a fleshy um, cartilage-less kind of flap of skin. So the structure of everything that we went over, tragus, antitragus, helix, antihelix, all of those components were essentially um, cartilage. They're cartilage-based that have skin over them, of course, um, but the earlobe doesn't have a lot of structure in it. So um, as I'm pulling you know, this down, as I'm kind of drawing my own, uh, ear, because you always project your own characteristics. And this is more about what my ear lo looks like. And that has the, I'm, the light is from up above. So this underside, it, his earlobe gets lost in the cast shadow. So it looks like it's just a hard edge. It's really not. There is a shadow underside and I'll give him a piercing, you know, so you can at least see that there's a center to that top plane of the earlobe. And then the earlobe is throwing a shadow um, onto the, the neck. So he's got all this lettuce back here. And this is all lettuce, you know, hair that ends. And then everything on this lower quadrant, lower left-hand quadrant, that's, um, this is cheek and then neck. So it's all, we're back to regular skin again. There's no hair, um, the hair ends as a background and then skin begins. 
so it'll be smoother and I think it'll be easier to, to shade it actually. Um, we're, 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 the ear has baffled um, man, man, like artists, mankind, I'm, I'm saying artists kind. Um, and I mean, I hope you guys did well. Um, if it feels if it feels weird, the chances of um, I mean, it's weird because you know maybe the proportions aren't right, but also it's an ear. Ears are weird looking. That like it's hard to get, even if it's one hundred percent accurate, it's still gonna look like a weird thing because it's a weird thing. It's like kind of like drawing a like a bug. You're like, this is what it looked like. You're like, well, it's terrifying. So I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm not trying to like knock my drawing or anything, but um, ears are no joke. And they, um, like I said, even if they're perfectly successful, um, it can be it can be um, not aesthetically pleasing sometimes. And and a lot of times with ears, you tone them down, like you don't emphasize them because they uh, they are such strange things. but uh, I have all, I mean we've got all the parts but they're all there and you know you've got this cast shadow from up above from the helix oh I didn't shade the helix that's interesting okay so um you know almost like Mona Lisa's eyelid let me slide this down I don't know if you guys remember but like there's the upper eyelid it looks like a like a bridge like a rainbow bridge um the lights come from the, the right this right side so then the left side of that bridge is going to be in shadow um the, the helix probably performs similarly and that there's shadow underneath the bridge and then there's going to be shadow on the far side of the bridge and that's what this part is right here so i, I kind of left that out and move back up so that was a long-winded explanation for saying i need to show some shadow on the front of that um, so the ear looking like something else is really helpful. Like uh, it does, you know, it, it probably does look like a bean. And if you're to, if you look at it and squint your eyes, you know, beans have like one side is swollen and a long broad arc and then it links up. I mean, it is a bean shape, so that's good. Um, and then I'm looking at the, the tip of the, um, the helix here. I feel like that looks like a talon, you know, like a, a pointed, you know, like a, like a, like a, yeah, it looks like a, a like a eagle's talon. <clears throat> Anything that you can do for um, to make it more familiar or make the object not as foreign and unknown. Um, you can use, you know, shape, you can associate shapes that you know about that you feel comfortable with. <laughs> oh, it's 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 interesting. I don't know if I've ever thought or to associate my ear with um something. Yeah, with like another like a shape association, I mean. Mm -hmm. What does yours look like? I don't think I should use that language now. <laughs> it it it's a mess. It doesn't look like an ear. I couldn't quite. I couldn't follow you. Was it was it going too fast? Um, maybe for me. Oh, okay. Well, the proof is in the pudding. So. Um, I think this was Lawson, you know, 
saying to his fans, watch me draw an eel. <laughs> Does anybody want to show theirs? Does anybody have a good experience? Yeah, let's see it, Ellie. Um. Oh, Ellie, hold that right, nice. Whoop. I'm gonna have to um stop the share for a second. Let's just do a let's just do a quick run through. I can't, yeah. I, I can't really see it well if it's not um, close up. My ear doesn't look that great. It looks more like a jelly bean. <laughs> a jelly bean. Yum. I love, now I'm thinking licorice jelly beans. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the size of your helix might be a little thin, like the, the arc part. Um, uh, Dara, can we see yours? Oh, yes. Yes. Nice. Cool. That looks great. You could, Emma, you could define, like, you could separate the, the lobe a little bit from the helix, like, just like, make, you know, feel that it felt really smooth. There might be like a little transition, like a little bend in right before the lobe starts. You know, it might like dip in, like, curl in a little bit. But like, that drawing is like awesome. Um, Stace, let's see, what, yeah, let's see what you had. Sure. Well, I went back to the feather a little bit. Um, okay, great. You are in way better position than I think you even know. I think if you were to start toning a lot of those uh -huh. marks with your pencil, um, yeah. I think that would you would be really happy really happy um or okay. if you went or if you went back in with the pen and i can see yeah. right now that like you kind of took liberties with how you made the marks like the way you made the hatch marks in as the, in the shading if you yeah. went back into the image and copied his marks mark for mark it would right. look it would look uh uh more accurate too um and i would same criticism uh as as the, before i think that yeah the helix might be a, might be served to be a little bit thicker you know the helix should okay the, the you know like the awning the curve the thickness of that form i think right. a little bit more substantial compared to the rest of your ear okay helix a little bit thick oh i see okay yeah and you could do that with an eraser so you could yeah. like you yeah. could carve, you carve off a little on the bottom and then even extend you know you know make the the tone that you have on the top even a little bit smaller okay thank you yeah, you're welcome. Very much. Um, anybody else want to go? Madeline, you want to go? Simone, who wants to go? Um, I can go. Um, actually, hey, Simone, 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 beat, Simone, beat, Simone beat you. You'll be next, Madeline. Oh, Simone. Nice. Nice decorative. Yeah. Yeah, decorative yeah, yeah. I like that clip. Now it looks like a chandelier. No, I'm just kidding. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, Ma uh, Madeline, you're up. That was great, Simone. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was great. And you have comments on that as well, how great that was. Okay, that was kind of interesting, but. Oh, wow. No, it looks really good. Um, yeah. The, the bottom of the lobe, I think needs like a little clarification where it, like, because honestly the bottom of the lobes are where it's still really far away from the cheek. You know what I mean? So like it can, it can <laughs> afford to have like a crisper silhouette, especially, you know, but every, but the, the the Y on the inside would look really cool and very natural. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, Amelia, you want to see yours? Did you show your? Let's see it. <laughs> I said I, these turned out way better than I was expecting. Not expecting, but Stacy got me scared when she was like, "My ear is terrible." Okay, mine does I not say look like an ear at all. Like I don't even oh. know what it looks like. I know. Oh. You have Amelia, um, come back. Yeah, a little bit higher. Good, good, good. Thank yes. you. <clears throat> no, it looks cool. It's like the you really got clear, defined shadow shapes, and that holds up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. 
I think if there were ways that you could like make hatch marks that like come out of the shadows a little bit. So it's like, instead of like being a shape that's like toned and a shape that has a clear line between paper and tone, if you had like little hatch marks that like gently moved you out from the dark into the light, it might be, it might help, but I don't know. It, 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 it kind of is doing its own thing. And I like the look of it. I think we just like maybe like sit on it for a little while. Um, Sebastian, how about you? <laughs> That's awesome. Sure. Talk Thanks about Sebastian. talk about the placement. You know what that reminds me of? We did. I, I I I it dawned on me one time. We were drawing a bird in class, and I'm like, the birds have ears. I'm like, they have ears. I mean, they can hear. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, imagine if birds had ears and we drew a human ear on the side of all these birds and it was hilarious anyway i like i like that nose sebastian can you bring that up once again please who knows <laughs> who knows nice um, yeah nice um they're very it's blended very nicely too um what, what do we who do we got next did we see janai's yet I don't think so. Dara? We'll do um we'll do Janaya, Naomi, and then Rowan and Tegwin. Okay, Dara, did you say that the earlobe was a little Placement. challenging? Yeah, I couldn't yeah, get it yeah. right. Dag. Great. Great. Yes, the oh, um, I didn't, I didn't meant, I, the, also you have deep shadows inside the ear, which is really nice. And then the cast shadow from the low good, good. Of the face, I will balance out your shadows. Like it doesn't have to be finished completely, but the, and I'll show, and I'll show you, I'll, I'll, I'll show as soon as Naomi and uh, Rowan and Tegwin go, I'll put the, I'll share the screen again and you'll see how important that cast shadow on the bottom of that ear is for the definition of the earlobe. I, I think that was a universal thing, I think, on everybody's. All right, Naomi, I'm pinning you. Yeah. Nice frame. And when you have tone, when you've toned out the entire section like that, it makes it easier to draw with the eraser. So if you wanted to pull out like a couple highlights, like on the top of the ear or the lobe or whatever, like now you have that ability because it's almost like the, you know, having everything covered, you can push and pull those lights and darks really smoothly. Wonderful. I feel like um, it looks like a um, like a science, uh, like a like a uh, you know like a sculpture that you'd have in your classroom to like show the show like in a yeah, it feels like a. Like a cast. What am I thinking? Yeah, like a cast, but not even like a cast, but like uh, you, know, you go to a dentist office and they have like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a um. Like a medical sculpture. Yeah, but there's a word for it. It's a, uh, a diagram. No. I don't know. All right, Degwin and Rowan, let's see what you guys came up with. Place the pen. It's always dramatic on your end, whether the camera's going to turn on or not. Nice. Yes, very clean. Yeah. yeah very strong, strong line work. And, you know, in the blending, you can soften some of those lines or diffuse them into the hair or whatever. But like right now it looks, um, it's, yeah, it's, I love, your style's coming through, which is awesome. And Thank the other you, thing, um, sorry, Trevor, um, tag, uh, tag one. Trevor, were you finished? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm good. I mean, those are my uh, thoughts. Ted, when the uh, wine that you drew, that it's so well defined that it helps me to more clearly understand the components of the ear. Thanks. Oh yeah. You're welcome. Um, and then, is your brother ready? Is he still working? I don't know. No, he's not. He's not done. <laughs> okay. You can email it. All right, let me go back on here and then I will um we only have like seven minutes left, so you can keep working on it. Or and I'm gonna quickly draw the um the other part, which is the part that I was I liked the uh, like the little uh 
um, like the symbol, the drum symbol form, which is a, an ellipse actually. Okay. I can think I can leave it right like this. I might have to get a new piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So when you say the ellipse, where are you referring to? Uh, I'm talking about the this little brooch attachment right down here. Ah, okay. It's like, it, it's it's yeah. similar. It's similar to the yeah the brooch and the hat. Yeah, um, it is in terms of like the shiny techniques and stuff. Um, it's just mm -hmm. that circle seen from the side. So it's like if this yeah. is the circle, if you tilt it, you're seeing it not only from the side but actually at a little bit of an angle. But it's and and it looks like it's got some carved stone in there, which I'm yeah say, yeah I was probably just a garnet that. probably a garnet. Do I have a garnet? I recently bought, I can't imagine that you would not. I recently bought a black garnet. I don't know where it is though. I was going to give it to my nephew for his birthday. Aww. Yeah, I don't have one. Must be at home. <clears throat> yeah, it was Sonny's. It was Sonny's birthday this weekend. Sweet. All right, so I set it up so you can see the disc up here. You can also see the ear. You can also see the face if anybody wanted to continue on today. You can look at all this lettuce back here, and then. That's not a hairy neck. That is a wool. Uh, <laughs> it's like a wool garment underneath the plaid, um, like scarf. All right. So, a lot of times when I draw ellipses, so let me just sketch it up here. When you're drawing a circle, one of the ways you can do it to make sure it's like precise is you start with a square. And then you know that that circle kisses the center of each side of the square. So this is a quick little ellipse lesson. So the way I do it is I always start it and then I try to feel the curvature um, of that circle. And I'm gonna interrupt really, really quickly. Yeah. This is a really quick lesson, but it's so valuable. Um, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's like really helpful. Um, really, really helpful. <clears throat> so the other ways that you can, so what, so the key, I guess, to drawing ellipses is, is that is to being able to conceptually in your mind know that you're drawing a circle. And then if you can find the plane of the, if you can find the plane of the, the, the square, then you can build the circle inside of it. So for example, I can draw the top of like a jack in the box here, you know, that's just, that's just like a jack in the box that's seen from the side, whatever. And then I can, I, I draw, by drawing the square, I can then find um, the middle by crisscrossing the square. And now I have all four points that this circle would uh, touch. And then you gotta, you gotta like, it helps to be looking at a curve, you know, at an ellipse as you do this. But conceptually, this is you know, the same circle that's you know tilted and seen from the side. So, in the spirit of our little metallic brooch here, I'm going to build. What I think will look like. I like the gem. It's really uh, geometrical. I know. I love it too. Yeah, it's beautiful. You can see all these facets. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, okay, so yeah, so I developed my four points on that square. And then I'm going to. I'm looking at my subject and I'm thinking about how that ellipse traverses the outside.
Yeah, could be right, could be wrong. But that's my strategy, at least, <clears throat> conceptually. And you can also freehand it. Thank you. Um, so by crisscrossing the square and finding the very middle of the square and simultaneously finding the middle of the circle, um, I think that's helpful in this case where I would, we have to place the little rim, which is like the, the, the girdle or the um, belt loop that holds the stone in place. And I'm seeing a, uh, an octagonal side. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five sides. Maybe another octagonal or not octagonal. Pentagonal. A lot of facets that look like they have five sides close to it. Like a soccer ball. Yes. Thank you. Um, now I can add my thickness by just echoing the front rim. Echo. And I can lose some of my construction lines. And then the whole point, I, honestly, the whole point of this, me wanting to do this, I think, is to draw these, these little radiating lines out of the center. <laughs> They're fun. They are pretty fun. It's incredible how they really relay movement. So I made the, there's like folds in the blanket, not the blanket, but the scarf. Um, I do like the, you can like see the, having, having thought about the ear and its convexity and concavity, um, you can actually see that in the folds. So it's like ah, concave, convex, yeah. concave, convex, concave, convex. So these um, you know, function like bracelet lines that can all be toned. And the reason I needed those is because the, this um, throw, the brooch throws a shadow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> fabric. Wow. That just got so 3D. Trevor? Yes, Dace. Before we leave, may I see your feather again? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. Got it. You're welcome. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Well, I guess the uh, the shell will be put off for another week. I think that was. I think that's been on the docket since week one. Um, All right. Uh, that's it. That's class. Trevor, thank you so much. You're welcome. I hope Everybody... that was informative. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone, and thank see you, you next week. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you. Thank you. See you next week, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.